Today, Music Talk goes to sunny California to talk to the Kofis Brothers about their new album, Turn My Radio Up. Kellen and Jamie are self-described petty guys, as in Tom Petty, who are running down their own dream. So the album is called Turn My Radio Up. Tell me um, how the, the, tell me where the germ of this album started, when and where, and with whom. <laughs> it, yeah, it, I mean, I think it almost sort of started out of boredom um, in <laughs> 20, 2020. We, we, we didn't have any, sh- you know, obviously it's the same story you've heard a bunch. We didn't have any shows to play. Yep. yep. And, but we wanted to get together and keep playing music and, you know, we, for a while we were rehearsing, but we we're going like, well, what are we rehearsing for? Like, we don't, why are we just going over these songs that we, that we know if we're not going to play them. So we, I think Jamie and I had a handful of songs probably already ready and, but it right. kind of just, um, we decided let's just start learning new songs. And then, um, shortly after that, we were able to get some dates in the studio in um, I guess early 2021. And, um, that was just, you know, then once you've got a, a deadline, then it, then it made it easy. You got got something to shoot for. So, yep. um, a little motivation. Just, just thought we had the, <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, exactly. Had some motivation. We thought we had the material. So, um, and we had the time, which is kind of rare generally. But um, it was so that was a nice opportunity for us. Cool. So, do you guys write together or separately, or both? Uh, it's, it's it's mostly separately. I'd say like the the skeleton of the song gets kind of constructed independently and then and then we bring it to the band at least for these this project we we kind of each had about i don't know five or six songs gotcha and uh, brought them to the band and uh, kind of arranged them uh collectively gotcha so i don't i've listened to the album but i don't know what the writing credits are so we'll try and touch on both of your songs <laughs> sure yeah <laughs> Um, but it does start out with a thing called The One That Got Away. So whose is that and what can you tell me about it? Why is it at the front of the record? It's time to hit the road Headlights shining through the rain I don't know where to go Everything to lose and nothing left to gain The one that got away Never felt this way before That, that one's mine. Yeah. So we, yeah, we're pretty like 50, 50, uh, we okay. split them up pretty evenly. We've kind of always done that. Maybe there's like, you know, 60, 40 on one album and you know, I don't go the other way, but I think this time we're, what are we six and five? Maybe, I don't know, but that song is mine. Um, and that was kind of like, I think it came later in the process. So maybe that's why we like it a little bit more. And I, I don't know, it's a little fresher, but, it just kind of has that track number one vibe. It kind of, you know, a little bit of mid tempo, a little like, you know, driving down the freeway with your, your yep. windows down kind of feel, you know, classic, um, you know, just try, you know, acoustic coming in on the second verse, keeping it moving, just that kind of song, you know? Right. That seems to be the, kind of the vibe of the record, if I'm not mistaken, it, it kind of just tootling down the highway, cranking it up, right? Yeah, that's a good, I think it's a good vibe for us. It's a vibe that we go, you know, we're big petty guys, obviously. Right. Uh, if, if you listen to it. and Running uh, down the road, that's the one to drive to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yep, definitely like, kind of like 90s petty, maybe late 80s, 90s. And, yep. uh, and you know, we like a, a bit of a hi-fi sound, if you will, and, and, some cool overdubs coming in and, and, you know, sparkly vocals and, and they, that's what we try to copy. That's what okay. the music we like to listen to. Yeah. So. All right. So we, we've talked about one of Jamie's, which one, which one is the first one of Kellen's that shows up on the record? Is it turn my radio up or Ramona? <laughs> turn, turn my radio up um, would be, yeah. So that's, I think that's number two, right? Yep. Yeah, it is number track. two. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It works. It works out pretty nicely. I want to turn Uh, 
um, yeah, and that was one. I, I'm trying to I'm trying to remember what we did with that one. I, I can't remember if I showed that to the band late or not. But um, the, the part that I remember the most about it is kind of um, this was sort of instrumental bridge section or, or whatever you want to call it. But that was a Tim Tim Bloom idea, and that was you know that we I think typically we come to the uh, to the studio pretty maybe prepared is not the right. I mean, we, we have come very, very prepared, but um, usually we've got every, every start and ending and in between, you know, down. And this time we kind of intentionally didn't want to, we wanted to be okay to changes, you know, yep. Yep. Um, we wanted to be flexible and, and be in, and, and just kind of embrace those things rather than, than be resistant to them. So that was one that I felt like coming into the studio, we had pretty close, but, but probably wasn't, wasn't complete. And, um, that's why it's great to have a producer and um, someone like Tim who had some extra ears on it. And I think that's like, it's my favorite section of the, of the song, but um, it's just kind of a, it's an interesting song. It's, it's a, uh, for us, just if we're talking like songwriting wise, it, I don't know if we have that many songs that begin with the chorus. Right. Um, which is, I'm always kind of interested in that. And I d- it didn't really occur to me until, till later in the song, but I, I do like that about it. Is that uh-huh. cool. the hook, the, the hook of the song is in the first word, first right. lines. Right. Yeah. Now, now speaking of the first lines of the songs, I was going to ask, it's interesting you've mentioned that. I noticed when I was listening to the record that I was jotting down the first line of almost every song. And I'm wondering as songwriters, is that, is that like the takeoff point? Do you need to find the first line and then you're off and running or does that come later? Is it not important? Am I making all this up or what? I'd say, I think you're on it for sure. I mean, it's, (laughs) it's usually, I'd say more, you know, occasionally I'll like come up with verse one and then decide that that's, then I'll move it later. But uh, most of the time, I don't know. I can't speak to Kellen, but uh, a good portion of the time, the first line that I think of when I, when the chords come to me or the melody is, is going to end up staying the first line because if it's, if it's not strong enough or if it's not like leading me down a, a certain path, I'll probably try to come up with something different anyway. So I think you're, I think you're right on that. And it, it is, you know, it, that's kind of where, I mean, for me, it's like, I'll, I'll start with some chords and then some kind of melody or, or phrase will pop into my head. Right. If I'm lucky. And that's kind of how I, get started right i know i've noted i ain't working for nothing and nothing's working for me for good enough this is a pretty good one <laughs> i ain't waiting for nothing because nothing's gonna wait for me i've been stuck inside this town a quarter century i don't know what the most important line is but uh it it, it very well might be the first first line of the song like, you know, it, it can't, it can't just be a throwaway, I, I yeah. think. And, and just to speak on what Jamie's talking about, I, I think I probably write in a similar way. And um, I think often whatever that first line is that, that you come up with kind of, kind of starts sending you in the direction of what the rest of the song might be. It doesn't necessarily have to be that, that content the whole time, but it, it sets the, it, it, it can, it can dictate what the content is and what the, um, just the mood of the whole of the whole song is right right and so between the two of you can you can you tell us is there a di- major difference in uh songwriting and who's done what? what what would you say is the difference between how you guys approach what you do uh it's i don't know it's hard to say uh, i mean there's definitely our differences um yeah. i think we're we have a lot of similarities also but um we're kind of i think just we have different sensibilities, sensibilities when it comes to singing, I think for uh, one thing. Um, so that leads us down different paths. Um, I might have more of a, like an R and B taste and he might have more of a full country taste. I don't know. I don't want to speak for him, but uh, so that kind of leads you a certain way. He also plays a different instrument than I do. Right. I play piano. He plays guitar. That's naturally going to, uh, yep take you down different roads. Um, so I think those are kind of the big, the big differences, but there's right. a lot, I mean, we like each other's uh, stuff a lot and we like a lot of the same music and we're, we're kind of really after the same goal, but we, we, we go about it slightly differently. So if you're, like the, if you're the piano player, can I assume that Cry and Shame is one of yours? It's kind of a piano bluesy thing. I think it's shame. 
That's one of mine for sure. Yeah, that's kind of like one of the outliers, I'd say, stylistically on this album. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's kind of been a, a, a thing, a style that we've all liked, but we've never really taken on um, necessarily. It's kind of hard to it's kind of hard to do. Um, but we got a great rhythm section and they were able to, to pull it off really well. And uh, I, yeah, that's one of my favorites. Cool. Now, speaking of a rhythm section that's rocking, Find Out the Hard Way sounds like it's just a live studio jam. Good time in the thing. Tell me about what it was, what the vibe was like when you were cutting that. All right, I'll tell the story. Let me let me tell the story. It's a it's Kellen's song. He brought it to the band, and uh, it's just kind of that you know uh, ACDC thing. It's just like right. <laughs> uh, just have some, just play really loud and have fun and, and write some kind of cocky lyrics. And uh, there's really not much to it more than that. And it's just got a fun chorus. And once we got all the uh, the guitars on it, it. Um, it made a lot more sense and got louder and was just, you know, it's a fun, it's a fun thing to, to play. And uh, one cool thing about that tune was the guitar solo. Right. Um, it's, it's really both the guitarists are just kind of that that happened live on the floor. Ah. Um, often we will we might overdub a, a solo. Um, and but that that one we didn't. And that one was both of the guys going at the same time, which is pretty, pretty neat, I think. You know? It, uh, like it might have been the first or second time they even tried that. I think somebody in the control room was like, why don't you guys just like both take a solo and see what happens? And I mean, obviously, they're listening to each other and, and yep. playing off of each other. But um, yeah. yeah, that was a pretty cool thing. We didn't. That's not something we've ever done. But cool. it, and uh, wouldn't have happened otherwise. To feel Kellen's back with us. You have anything to add there? Like <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry about that. That's right. I'm sorry about that. Um, no, I, I think uh, I'm glad that feel came across because that's what we were. That's what we. That's how it was. And I think that's probably. I don't know if you already said this, but I think that song is that doesn't have any overdubs. Um, I think it's all just live on the on the floor, other than the, the lead, the, other than the lead vocals. Right. But um, yeah, that's that's exactly what we were going for. Just big guitars and big drums, um, and it it's a fun one to play. And like, we love those kind of like Jamie was saying that ACDC style, like open. I don't know if you're a, gu a guitar player, but those open chords, those open um, strings ringing out. Right. Um, I, I love that type of sound. So um, I think, and I, I'm pretty, I'm pretty stoked about. The, the guitar tones we got in general on the album and Tim and, and the engineer, we had a really great engineer um, helping with that. Well, and it's followed by It's So Easy, which again, there's bluesy piano in there. So I'm guessing Jamie had something to do with this one, but it's got a great opening line about city kids and tires spinning, mentions Buddy yeah. Holly and the Rolling Stones. What more could you ask for, right? Yeah, totally. <laughs> That's the idea. I mean, I think that my, I was like, I want to write a, something, I want to write a verse that, you know, that like the Stones or Buddy Holly would, would write. And then instead I just, well, why don't I just like invoke their names and that might be good enough or something. I, I don't know. Yeah, that's all it is, really. It's just like, what am I thinking about right now? Uh, that's what I'm thinking about. So that's what came out of my mouth. And uh, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with how that one came out. Didn't know um, how that was going to go with, with the, uh, 
the band, I was kind of one where I was like, I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen here, but right. here's how it goes. And then everyone kind of just came up with some parts. It wasn't too hard to figure out. Yeah. So, so the album kind of comes to a close with a couple of slower tunes, uh, learn the lesson and feel this free. Um, is that kind of how you felt it should kind of resolve itself? Yeah, I don't know. It's like sequencing is always something that uh, is a tough one. Um, but I think we do generally uh, try to put something a little bit more mellow at the end. Or I don't know. I'm not sure what it is about the last song or the last few um, that you what, what you're looking for exactly. But you know it when you when you hear it. Yep. I don't know. We, we, we're very we take it definitely pretty seriously, maybe too seriously, honestly. But uh, we're into sequencing and uh, we always go back and forth like the whole band, really. Uh, about what goes where and how you know side a and once we started making vinyl too oh great uh, i think yep. this is the second or third record we've done on vinyl so that's that's a whole new consideration as to like okay well this one might not be the one to start the record but maybe it could start side b you know and uh, yeah 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 so it's it's a fun thing i don't know how you know serious people you know seriously people are taking it or really caring much but it, it's fun to do and i think it does add something to the listening experience so do you have um, the vinyl yeah. ready to go have you got it in stock well we just got the test pressings sounds good over here right um and good. so that's a good, good that's a good sign so i don't know how long after it's going to be a few more months for sure everything yeah. is, you know <laughs> everything's backed up but um yeah that'll happen so i would hope sometime this year this is, I'm trying to get Elon says. Musk to try and invest in some pressing plants instead of yeah for crying Twitter. out loud i don't think it'll be that much money <laughs> I think Jesus. a lot less than, yeah, I think he's got it. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I, I mean, that's a, that's the thing. There's only like one plant in the whole world. Or it's something. in like it's the Czech it, Republic, right? In the Czech Republic. Yeah, like, what in, are we it's doing? It's in Prague. Yeah. What are we yeah. Doing? I was going to say our, our test pressings came from Prague. So I, I, I mean, it's, it's bizarre, but yeah, I think they'll be here by the end of the summer. Right. Yeah. See, then he, Putin's really going to piss people off if he bombs the pressing plant. <laughs> no, yeah, do not do that. Yeah. <laughs> All, right. yeah. All right. So on that note, uh, we, should, we probably should wrap things up. What do you What do you got planned next? Anything after the record comes out? What are you thinking about? Let's, let's go to New Zealand sometime. There you go. Yeah. Now you're talking, man. Yeah. I have a feeling it would be a yeah. good time down here. Yeah. Have you never been? I know. No, no. never. Not even close. Well, I'd Australia has like a blues fest that happens every year, so you can come right. onto right, that right. and then swing over here afterwards. That would be the way Byron okay. Bay Blues Fest. Well, that yeah, that's that right. Sounds, I've heard of that. Yeah, that would be my first choice. But um, what we're doing instead is we're we're just going to play. I mean, it's not it's not a bad alternative. We're going to play a lot around California and the yep. West Coast this this summer. Um, and it's kind of you know it's the first time we've really gotten to do. It seems like we're going to get into rhythm here. We're starting to. Um, of just consistent, consistent playing like we used to, which is a pretty exciting thing, um, considering it's been, you know, it's been a few years now. Yep, so yep. we're going to just go after it. And, and uh, we've got a nice summer plan. And then, you know, we're starting to just look at how we follow that up. But um, some videos in the meantime that hopefully, you know, so so our our, our New Zealand fans can can <laughs> stay, stay connected to us. But right. um just, just all that stuff, but a lot of live playing is where we're going to be focused. Excellent. Well, I can't wait for the vinyl to come out because it feels like a record that needs to be flipped over. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yep. yeah. <laughs> yep. All righty. Yep. Well, thanks, guys, for spending time with me. I appreciate it. Good luck with everything.